Prime Minister Trudeau and his wife Sophie Gregoire Trudeau are invited guests. Earlier today, I spoke to them about their opportunity to pay respects and reflections on Her Majesty. I want to begin with what it was like for you, Prime Minister Trudeau, to be at the the foot of the coffin of a woman you met when you were just seven years old. A moment of solemnity, of reflection, but there was this beautiful energy in the space where we are all of us with our own stories and our own grief sharing in this moment of respect and reflection for an extraordinary leader. And Madame Trudeau, that's the point of all of this is what we've all learned from her. Largely a world leader, most of it a woman in a man's world. As a woman, what do you think we have most learned from Her Majesty? I think her, her female leadership in all of its authenticity. She was a truly present woman when you met her. She cared. Um, she was deeply interested in world affairs and always made her point very clear, always in respect to other people. And I think that people respect that. Was there something you remember, one little exchange? Yes, because I remember visiting her with my little one, Hadrian, who must have been, what, four years old? Yeah, it's pretty small. Even, yeah. even yeah. younger. And he was trying to touch everything at, at, in, in the palace, and she was being so kind. And she said, he can go look out the window into the garden. So, you know, the mother as well. And in the Ireland. grandmother. It was the, the grandmother grand in that yes, moment. You're right. She's yeah, like, yeah, everyone, yeah. yeah, don't worry about that snuff box. I'm That's like, true. Okay, these little trinkets on her side tables. So Just cute <laughs> moments, real moments of humanity, because at the end of the day, this is what it's about. It's about bringing people together. And this is a family grieving now in the public eye, and you both know a little something about that. What about the challenges of, of, of that, not being able to grieve privately? I'm reminded a little bit of, of my dad's passing you know, 22 years ago now. And the thing is, yes, it's a moment of personal family grief surrounded by others. But the outpouring of love uh, from around the world for Her Majesty, uh, I know is is comforting to the family. And Canadians revered the Queen. However, we are all aware that half the country still feels maybe it's time to cut ties. And I wonder if that is a discussion, a debate, a document you're willing to open. Every conversation I have with Canadians right now is about the cost of living, about climate change, about you know, all these other issues, about reconciliation, the things that we need to do to grow the economy and be successful in this world. Yes, there's people who say, okay, maybe we could make a change to our system of government, but very few people say, oh, we don't have a stable system of government right now. We could always you know, think about changes, but I've always said, let's... Let's wait until we've settled everything else. And I don't think there's any big urgency to open the Constitution. We'll stay focused on the things that matter to Canadians now. What would you say to them then? What's in it for Canadians to remain a constitutional monarchy? Uh, the kind of stability we have right now, the kind of uh, enduring democracy that uh, has, um, doesn't have the kind of polarization that we see in some countries. Whereas for us, the monarchy is so above um, the very robust debates of the day that it allows us to really push hard on political ideas without bringing into question the stability of our system or even of our country. And I think that's, a, that's something that isn't to be underestimated in this day of conflict, of polarization, of, of backsliding of democracies, that Canada has one of those most stable democracies in the world. Uh, and you know, we're, we're, we're good to keep it for a, a long while.